John Calvin on Psalm 45. My heart is indicting a good matter. I speak of the things which I have made touching the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Thou art fairer than the children of men. Grace is poured into thy lips. Therefore God hath blessed thee forever. Gird thy sword upon thy thigh, O most mighty, with thy glory and thy majesty. And in thy majesty ride prosperously because of truth and meekness and righteousness. And thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things. Thine arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies, whereby the people fall under thee. Thy throne, O God, is for ever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. All thy garments smell of myrrh and aloes and cassia out of the ivory palaces whereby they have made thee glad. King's daughters were among thy honorable women. Upon thy right hand did, this, did stand the queen of, in gold of Ophir. Hearken, O daughter, and consider and incline thine ear. Forget also thine own people in thy father's house. So shall the king greatly desire thy beauty, for he is thy lord, and worship thou him. And the daughter of Tyre shall be there with a gift, even the rich among the people shall entreat thy favor. The king's daughter is all glorious within, her clothing is of wrought gold. She shall be brought unto the king in raiment of needlework. The virgins, her companions that follow her, shall be brought unto thee. With gladness and rejoicing shall they be brought, they shall enter into the king's palace. Instead of thy fathers shall be thy children, whom thou mayest make princes in all the earth. I will make thy name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore shall the people praise thee forever and ever. Listen, O daughter, consider and give ear. Forget your people in your father's house. The king is enthralled by your beauty. Honor him, for he is your lord. This passage contains a remarkable prophecy in reference to the future calling of the Gentiles, by which the Son of God formed an alliance with strangers and those who were his enemies. There was between God and the uncircumcised nations a deadly quarrel, a wall of separation which divided them from the seed of Abraham, the chosen people. Ephraim, uh, excuse me, Ephesians 2, verse 14. For the covenant which God had made with Abraham shut out the Gentiles from the kingdom of heaven till the coming of Christ. Christ, therefore, of his free grace, desires to enter into a holy alliance of marriage with the whole world, in the same way as if a Jew in ancient times had taken to himself a wife from a foreign and heathen land. But in order to conduct into Christ's presence his bride, chaste and undefiled, the prophet exhorts the church gathered from the Gentiles to forget her former manner of living and to devote herself wholly to her husband. As this change, by which the children of Adam begin to be the children of God and are transformed into new men, it is a thing so difficult, the prophet enforces the necessity of it the more earnestly. In enforcing his exhortation in this way by different terms, hearken, consider, incline your ear, he intimates that the faithful do not deny themselves and lay aside their former habits without intense and painful effort, for such an, for such an exhortation would be superfluous were men naturally and voluntarily disposed to it. And indeed, experience shows how dull and slow we are to follow God. By the word daughter, the prophet gently and sweetly soothes the new church, and he sets before her the promise of a bountiful reward to induce her, for the sake of Christ, willingly to despise and forsake whatever she made account of up to now. It is certainly no small consolation to know that the Son of God will delight in us when we shall have put off our earthly nature. In the meantime, let us learn to, that to deny ourselves is the beginning of that sacred union which ought to exist between us and Christ. By her father's house and her people is comprehended whatever men have belonging to themselves. For there is no part of our nature sound or free from corruption.